Hello everyone, my name is Julian Camarena. And I'm Adrian Camarena. And we're here with a very special guest, Grammy winning producer, songwriter, composer, multi-instrumentalist, Clarence J. Yes, pleasure to be here. Thank yeah. you for having me, for guys. Out. Yeah, okay. yeah. So how, how's your morning going so far? Good, yeah, good. Woke up, um, you know, I was coming out of a cold, um, and um, but um, woke up, got things to do, deadlines. Hey, no complaints, it's LA. You know, we're busy, we're working. And uh, that's what it's about, and I'm glad to be here. So you're originally from Sri Lanka, right? Yes, yes. Um, short story, I guess, maybe, is uh, I was born there. Um, we left um, when I was like 10 yeah. to Australia. I was raised in Australia after that for 20 years, 20-something years. Did you adapt the Australian accent a little bit? Yeah, might, you know, for a little bit, might, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but after that, moved here. Yeah. About 12 years ago. So, at what point did you start into getting into music? I started started getting music because my okay, my mom's a pianist, mm. so she was like came from like a classical background. So she sort of got me introduced to piano when I was four. Did she kind of force you? Into yeah, it's like <laughs> oh, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's like at the convent <laughs> in front of the nuns, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but I, I think I had a choice, you know. But then you. Sort of rebel, you know, it's like you got, ah, I don't, you know, but then you realize, oh, it's actually not bad, you know, it's just fun. And uh, then you start hearing things, and you go, oh, those are notes, you know, <laughs> and then um, I started liking it. So um, that was, that was it. That was yeah, then I started working out how to write songs, not write songs, how to play songs, replay songs, you know, that was on the radio and stuff and yes. learn how to play. Yeah. Clarence has a bunch of, I mean, he, if you've seen any pictures of his studio on his social media, he's got just a bunch of, the most amazing gear, a lot of it's vintage gear, a lot of it's historic gear. Like you have a uh, an RCA console. Yeah, yeah, I have a I have a one of those rare RCA pieces. Yes. Um, Tell us about that. There's only a few of those made, right? Yeah, there was. Um, uh, to our knowledge, that's four of them that were made yeah. for each of the RCA studios um, in the '60s, in the late '60s, yes. um, and uh, so RCA studio in uh, Hollywood, in um, in uh, New York, mm -hmm. Chicago and Nashville mm -hmm. had one of them, uh, 24 channel. And um, so it, it was commissioned for like, you know, that was their main thing. And uh, then it sort of went into retirement and, and then one of them went into the museum and all that stuff, Country Music Hall of Fame. So then um, basically um, mine had sort of gotten shipped from there to Hollywood and then it went up to Northern California to Oakland to a studio in, the, in I think around 1980. and. Um, and then some guy who had it, he was um, he was working with it, and then um, then he used it for like twenty something years, and then it went into retirement uh, in the two thousands. And then uh, I was lucky to find out about it and pick it up and bring it home. <laughs> what, what were some of the songs that have been? Because I know you mentioned there's a few. Things. Yeah, um, uh, to my so far we're sort of tracking everything down and pe from people who did it and whatever. So I know that um, Sugar Sugar um, by the Archies was cut on it. Um, and I'm a believer um, by the monkeys. And how I know this is my co-writing partner, whom I met after I got the console, Jeff Barry. He's like this rock and roll hall of famer, songwriting hall of famer. He walked in the studio and he was like, hey, I know that console. And I'm like, from where? He goes, was it in New York? I go, yes. And he goes, well, I cut Sugar Sugar on that in 1969, 50 years ago now. What we've done is, um, uh, I've integrated it with the analog and the digital, so sort of get a hybrid, and we get the best of the analog and best of the digital world. So what's the difference between analog and digital, or like the pros and cons of each one? Oh, good question. To me, um, probably analog, I think it, the sound, um, even though there is digital emulations that are there today that are close, and I think they're getting closer, um, but um, to me, it's the sound of the analog. Second is um, the pro for analog is hands-on. Um, you know, it just, just literally, literally it's more fun. It, yeah, it's more, yeah, fun. It's more fun. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Summed it up right there. It's, it's it's just more fun. You just feel it's like more, it's, stick shift versus automatic for cars. I don't know. But probably, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a nice way to look at it. Absolutely, it's just the same. You just feel like a little more in. You know, um, it doesn't mean digital doesn't have that feeling either because you're emotionally tied to the art anyway doesn't matter where, um, 
Now the pros of digital is, um, I would say the first thing is recall. Today, for today's music, um, recall meaning basically you do something, you finish it, and you save it, and four days later or a week later, the network or the artist says, hey, can you do like, can you turn that volume down on that one word <laughs> or that one sound? And bam, you can do it in like a second. But if you go to the analog console, where do you start? You know, and your time that's going to take to do the fixing of it. To me, that's the pros and cons. Um, and also analog, I mean, digital gives you a lot more sort of flexibility in terms of options um, where you can have lots of plugins and all the latest plugins that all the companies are putting out every sort of minute and you can have access to those which means your creative flow uh, you don't really need a lot but you know it you get the options for that i use mostly mostly analog gear but like it's you know it's it's fun it's I mean, fun and the tools make things more fun you know what sure. I mean? and the more create more like creative tools you have to use and stuff it's it's always good options are good so, so, so you, you do composing for, for TV and film as well? Yeah, um, I would say more songwriting, um, you know, that's sort of the thing, even though I've done composing and scoring a little bit, but more sort of songwriting. Yeah. Uh, this artist that I was working with and the manager, they're like, hey, you know, we got to write a song, uh, theme song uh, for a, um, a TV show called Creepy through Nickelodeon, Discovery Nickelodeon um, distribution or whatever. And I'm like, Wow, let's start. Let's do this. You, do you enjoy doing it more for film or do you enjoy doing more like the uh, pop music or sort of by songs? Yeah, stuff, or, songs or is it just different? It's different. Um, you know, when, when in a, like in, a, in the pop world, let's call it the radio world, right? You know, um, um, it's, you know, the, the way you approach it is even though it's supposed to have a visual, you really approach it purely without a visual in mind, even though the story can have a visual in your mind. But the TV slash film, there is a visual component that's already influencing it. It's there on top or it's before and after and you got to fill the song in, you know, so you got to fill that space. So you could have, you could have um, a story that's coming in and then you go, okay, well, you got to write a song here to continue the story but also give it depth for the characters and then end it with then it sort of ties in with the story. So that influences your thing. Or oh, they've already got a visual and a story and you got to sort of enhance it just by writing a song that they're not singing necessarily, but it's at the back. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen it like during editing videos where maybe it's more dramatic singing, you're cutting back and forth. And then once you add the music, then it adds more of a, there's more emotion to it. Yes, yeah. I saw you, you composed music for uh, or worked on, or maybe was a music supervisor for one of John Claude Van Damme's films. Yeah, um, JCVD. Yeah, yeah JCVD. Cool. It was a, it was great. It was through a composer friend of mine, um, and uh, he was doing the scoring, yeah. and uh, I was doing, I guess, the songs and sort of supervising the thing. And um, yeah, so JC John Claude basically he was, you know, hey, I need a song here, it's here, here, and so we just wrote songs and uh, to get a vocalist in, and it was. Some of the some of like critical so deadlines so overnight sometimes you know it had to write a song and and produce it and you know whatever mix it have it ready put it in and make sure it works um, so yeah it was it was a lot of fun and uh, man he's he's amazing um, he's uh, he's a veteran and uh, he's good at what he does. So you got a chance to work pretty closely with him. Absolutely, sure yeah. He used to come to my studio studios. and yeah, he'd uh, and uh, also my, my composer friend. So we he'd review stuff as well as we so he'd. he'd he, he, he was cool because he'd literally be writing notes with one hand and doing like push-ups push with the other <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he, he can't, can't do, do the one hand, he split, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> so one of your most popular songs is the Friday song. Yes, sir. And that's been covered by, it's been covered by Glee, covered by Jimmy Fallon. And yeah. then I know you mentioned to me the other day that the, the birds covered it as well. Yeah, so uh, it's probably been covered by over 100 maybe more, um, you know, uh, artists and whatnot. Um, yeah, starting from Glee, who did the first immediate sort of major cover because it was a release uh, and they wanted it for the show. Jimmy Fallon and Stephen Colbert uh, did that on their, on their TV show. Um, so that's two. And then um, uh, recently, um, uh, Roger McGuinn from The Birds, see The Birds version with the nice, cool sort of guitar, 60s guitar thing. Uh, but in between, it had put, like Katy Perry performed it, um, um, Justin Bieber performed it, um, and then 
there's like a whole bunch of another world of people that yeah. performed is, it and that, covered it. Is that kind of crazy? You know, a song that you've you know that you were part of and you co-wrote and stuff and produced and stuff, and you hear all these different artists singing it and stuff. Is that kind of? Yeah, you can't write that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not in the it's not in the Bible for me anyway. Did you yeah. expect to have that sort of big of an impact on on social media and and actually everywhere? Yeah. You know, it's. Those things are hard to write, like predict, right? But your your consciousness sort of goes, okay, it's happening. And what do you do when it's happening? You got to add feel to it, right? When success hits, I believe strongly that you got to go hard, like add feel, so it maximizes that and it gives you a long, the longest tail that's possible. So, so from that point of view, I couldn't guess which direction it was going in. But I generally knew that um, if it's a great song and if it's got enough fuel, it will last a long time. Um, and that's just the basic theory of it, you know. Now, and, uh, how did that whole thing start? I mean, you, so you had, a, you had a production company at the time, yeah. you know, where you were doing a bunch yes. of different songs. Yes. Um, and that just happened to be one of the songs you were doing. Yeah, yeah it, was, um, it was myself and my writing partner. We, yeah, we basically, um, We'd work with a whole bunch of artists, you know. Uh, every two days, we work with a new artist um, and uh, produce. And then we'll also have videos done. So that was part of the whole thing, music videos and songs. And I mean, it was a lot of fun, you know. And our goal was basically, this is sort of, you know, when 2009, 2010, when, you know, sort of YouTube was getting hotter and, yeah, yeah. you know, and, uh, and so that idea of, we, we were hoping to get traction on videos. Yeah. Um, so the idea of getting a viral thing was in the back of our minds, yeah, yeah. but it was never in the front because we really were just doing it out of passion. Yeah, yeah. And we knew that if we do something cool and we do a lot of it, there's a high chance. We're giving ourselves a fair chance for success. Yeah. See, and you were, you were writing, producing a song, one song each day, right? Practically. Practically, Practically. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And like, like the pressure was, everything. yeah, finishing that's everything. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. so, that's you know, crazy. so at that point you uh, write what you... <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I mean, like writing a song one day is, is you know, but like the, there's a huge process to making a song, sure. you know, the recording, the mixing and everything. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's a long process. What, what are the different steps? You have to, first you gotta write it. Well, yeah, you gotta, have to write it and then you have to, you know, you have to produce, record it, produce it, yeah. and then mix it and then master it. So, I mean, there's a few bunch of different steps. Yeah. And if, if you, I mean, you're a multi-instrumentalist, so you'd know how to play a few different instruments. Yes, so. sir, yeah. What so, instruments do you know how to play? So, I started with keyboards, piano. So, keyboard is my main thing. And then I play guitars enough to get a recording done. And if I can't play a certain part, I could hire there's plenty of amazing players in LA, as we know, so they're available. I can play bass. Um, sometimes I get amazing bass players in. Um, so, and programming drums, I've got a live drum set up. So I, I know enough to put it together, um, uh, uh, put a basic song together, uh, a pop song or whatever. And um, the rest is basically um, doing it fast. Um, and I've sort of liked that, you know, if you catch something and it feels good, just go for it. You know, don't procrastinate or overthink it. You know, just go. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool because yeah, because then you don't yeah. think too much about it. About it. I think that's yeah. how it is with most things, though. Like any creative kind of field, you can't overthink it too much. You just gotta. Go I think some it. of the, some of the best songs, even some of the best songs that I worked on, they're usually the ones that I got. You know, pretty much came up with right away. Right. Because it just flowed nicely, yeah, and you're not fighting anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's very instinctive. Because I think the worst thing you do is second guess yourself sometimes. So it's like, if it flows nicely, then usually it ends up turning out. It's right. right. Yeah. So going back to the Friday song, uh, how how did you see it? So it started off gaining traction. I guess what was it? Touch by No commented on it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So just brief history is that yeah. so this channel. Uh, my company's channel we you know at the time we had we uploading some songs you know maybe i think we had like 20 songs or whatever on it at the time and i think one of them one of the artists had gotten like over a hundred thousand something hits already so you know it was it was starting to get traction and um and we're sort of doing some organic sort of ways of marketing and things like that so street marketing and getting the hype but so when we put up Friday, um, it had received like four or five thousand hits, yeah. um, likes, I mean hits rather. And, and, um, and then Tosh.0 jumped on and, and obviously he made a comment, could this be, I think 
paraphrasing, but could it be the worst song or something? <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I think that fueled yeah, exactly, stuff. Yeah. And uh, as soon as we sensed that it was fueling, then basically we jumped on board and started managing the channel in terms of comments and stuff like that. And um, also on the f on the on the front end to make sure that media caught it. So we were literally on the phone talking to a whole bunch of people like ABC and stuff. And, hey guys, you know, want you um, coming in and, um, you know, can we get on, get this song on Friday? You know, on Friday, on Friday, you know. <laughs> so. What other products do you have going on? I know you, you do a lot of shit with, uh, with Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, so, um, um, well, at the moment, um, uh, I've got this thing with um, uh, Lego. Oh yeah. So for the for their for their TV series, yeah. uh, can't say too much, yeah. uh, but uh, basically um, I'm writing songs, so um, so it's good news. So um, it's fantastic stuff. So and it's it's great. It's great fun. It's going to be good, and um, and um, I think at this point maybe end of the year release or whatever. I don't know the the details of that, but uh, that keeps uh, me busy, and I'm some, writing some songs for some European artists as well. Um, yeah, so there's enough on the plate. What sort of advice would you give to someone who's starting out trying to get into the music, either into TV or film or just pop music? First, um, I would say know your craft yeah. and just get so good at it. So good at it. That's to me like everything. Just get excellent at what you do uh, because that is going to, first of all, make you stand up, right? Stand out um, in the crowd. So. If, you know, there's never a point where you are great. Believe that you're not great. Just continue that. Yeah. Remind yourself that you're going to be greater tomorrow. So I think that's the first thing. Remind, you that, remind yourself that you suck. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess remind yourself that you can always get better. Get you, better. Yeah, you're still, exactly. you got to always keep learning. Improving. Keep learning. So I would say that's the first thing. Um, next thing is relationships. Build your relationships uh, with people from similar um, um, sort of entities or industries and outside of it because you don't you never know the value of that so build those relationships um, and then third is be flexible with who you work with if they're so passionate about something and they're paying their last dollar yeah. there's a high chance they're gonna go further too yeah they're gonna so, put everything they have into it yeah, yeah, yeah so, so you yeah. are you are on their vehicle in life so they're already moving your art for you so uh, that's the other way to look at it. That's cool, I like that. Well, thank you so much for joining us and hanging out with us today. Oh, okay. great having you as Pleasure. a guest. And, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. And, so, um, until next time, guys. Thank you. Yeah.